Today we've got a client with fish presenting with a skinny abdomen and occasionally a lump forms on its head and then it pops and forms a little hole so they're thinking maybe it's holding the head disease. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed the fish a little bit so that we can get some feces so that we can examine them down the microscope. We'll also do routine water quality testing as well as gill biopsies and skin mica scrapes to check for external parasites. With the thin abdomens, what we're going to do is we're going to check the diet, whether they're getting enough and of sufficient quality in terms of food. And so what we're going to do is we're going to weigh the fish, estimate the biomass, weigh the amount that they normally feed, and then check that against each other. So we've run our basic water chemistry set. There's ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, KH, and GH, and basically the water quality is perfect for them. Gonna get a body weight for him in case we're going to give medicines and also estimate the amount of food we're going to feed him. It's about one point, uh, 104 grams. Now we're just going to take a routine gill biopsy and skin make a scrape. We've not been successful in getting any feces. So just going to put the gill biopsy onto the slide. Our cover slip here on the edge contains the skin mucus. So we can have a look at that. So just having a look at the gills and they look nice and healthy, no excess mucus and just the right amount of blood. So it's not anemic. And I'm just examining the skin mucus now. Looking for any evidence of parasites. And basically there's nothing moving at all which means there are external parasites is not an issue for this guy okay now we're just going to take a scrape from the top of his head you can see it here From the skin scraping of the Feste cichlid, we've made a couple of smears. I'm going to stain these up and look to see what sort of reaction is happening around that hole and also look for possible evidence of mycobacteria or some other bacteria. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a cytology preparation made from the Feste cichlid hole from the head. We've applied a diff quick stain and if we focus here, having a closer look, so now we're looking at we started off at 100 times magnification, now we're on 400 times. And if we focus in and out on this field, what you can see, we've got a lot of mucus cells, um, epithelial cells, maybe macrophages, and inside these, as we focus through, you can see that there are some refractile rod-shaped material. And this could be either mycobacteria or iridophore granules or crystals from the so that what gives them the metallic sheen. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a ZN stain, a Zeal Nielsen stain. And if these rods stain up pink, it means it's going to be mycobacteria. However, if they don't stain up pink, they're most likely going to be the iridophore crystals that give them the metallic sheen. So we'll apply the stain now and find out what we've got. So now here we've run the ZN stain, the Zeal Nielsen stain. You can see none of the rod shaped structures are staining pink, which means that it is not a mycobacterial infection and that the rods were actually iridophore crystals. So we're believing that this hole in the head is actually the start of actual hole in the head disease and likely a result of under nutrition. So with proper nutrition, we're going to see a reversal of the hole and also a filling up of the abdomen. So here's a selection of the foods that the owner is feeding the fish. Um, we've actually got a few jars here. This is about a year out of date. Uh, it's three years out of date and then this one has got no use by date. And if you have a smell of these, especially this one, it's got a bit of a sour smell. And, and these other ones are slightly going off. Uh, so food does go off. You gotta make sure that you purchase them 
and feed them within the expiry date. Basically, you're gonna feed them within six months of opening. You're gonna use up the whole jar. So the owner has given us a sample of how much he feeds uh, the fish uh, every couple of days. And for this tank with the Feste Cichlid, he's feeding about two or three pellets a day. And so that's equals to 0.1 gram. And for the larger tank with all the red devils, jaguar, as well as the black belt cichlids, uh, this is about the amount that he feeds. Comes to about 1.97 grams. So the first day cichlid weighs 100 grams. By right, every day you should be fed about one gram of food, which would equal to about this amount. So for that large tank uh, with the red devils and jaguar, um, this is the amount being fed every couple of days, uh, when in fact the amount to feed based on the total weight biomass of the tank is about this much. So to summarize, what we've asked the owner to do is to increase the amount fed from 10 to 20 times what was originally being fed, because that's the amount that they need based on 1% of their biomass per day. And this quantity of food that we want to feed, we need to increase that over three to four weeks because that will allow the biofilter time to adapt to the amount of nutri nutrients that's going to be added to the tank. Underfeeding has become an increasingly popular trend nowadays, unfortunately. In the previous years, what we we're encountering was that people were killing them with kindness, with overfeeding, leading to poor water quality. And the reverse has happened now with people underfeeding because they want to maintain optimal water quality for better fish health. So make sure that you know how much you're feeding your fish. Make sure you're feeding them about 0.5 to 2% of their body weight every day. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe for updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week. Oh, 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 oh,